Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Snorkel.tv. Thanks for joining me. Today I want to do something a little bit different than my normal tutorial where I show you a specific feature of something dealing with the green sock tweening platform. And I'm just going to ease it back a little bit and just give you a general discussion of a few little ActionScript 3 features. Now, I know a lot of you in my audience, you know, you've done a little bit of dabbling here and there, but you sort of just take things as they come. And like myself, you're probably sitting back wondering, you know, I wish I could just sit down next to somebody and have them explain this stuff to me without me reading some book that's written in a language I can't even understand. So today is the first of one of my little ActionScript 3 fireside chats, if you will, where I'm just going to show you an approach to a situation that we have here that hopefully uh, you can use in your work and it will help you uh, make some cooler stuff. So... Um, we're really going to be focusing here on targeting movie clips, telling them what to do, and also showing you that with ActionScript 3, it doesn't really matter where that clip lives, it's still very easy to target it. So when I'm clicking on these different rooms of this house, I'm physically moving this Harold movie clip into a different room, and my buttons don't need to be updated at all. They don't care at all what movie clip this Harold guy is in. They can have him stand, sit, and also do the chicken. Yeah, you weren't expecting that, were you? Hey, sit down. And that goes for all of you. Um, one thing I want to point out before we go on, please save your questions till the end, because I can't hear you. All right, so what I'm going to do is investigate this file and show you how I can talk to a movie clip whose position and location, I should say, is changing all the time. Um, this file, the way it's set up, let's just go into Path to Instant Start and show you my first little tip about keeping your instance names and locations of clips short. Um, you'll see that my code here, here, references Harold, that little dude, the stand button, the chicken button, and the sit button. That guy, Harold, lives inside of a lot of different movie clips. So the path to that movie clip in order to tell him what to do is very long. You'll see he lives inside of House Animation MC, and then there's House MC and Floor 1 MC, Room AMC, and then there's finally Harold, who I can tell to stand, do the chicken, or sit by playing different frames in his animation. So let's show you exactly where Harold is. In this file, you'll see that this house animates onto the stage. So we're going to start off with something called House Animation MC. That's its instance name. If I double click on it, you'll see that there is a timeline. <gasps> oh no, how dare you do a timeline animation? Well, yes, I do, and so will you. So there's the house getting bigger. And inside of this thing here called House, the thing that is animating inside of House Animation, we go even further into something here called floor one. So we have floor one and we have floor two. So the house animation has a house that has two floors. Inside of floor one, you'll see that we have, oh, we don't have an instance name, hold on. There we go, there's room B, it doesn't even have an instance name. Here we have room A underscore MC. So there's the room inside of that floor of the house. And so you'll see that when I move the room, I move Harold because Harold is inside that room. So if I double click on that room, you'll see here we have Harold MC. So every time I want to tell Harold MC to do something, I have to traverse this deep, deep path of nested movie clips. Now let's double click on Harold, and you'll see that we have these frames labeled here for all his different types of animation. If I want Harold to stand, you'll see this tween that I'm scrubbing right here has him stand up. If I want him to sit, well, he'll sit down. If I want him to do the chicken, you'll see that he stands up and he does a little chicken dance. Or maybe it's actually the pigeon. I get confused. Um, and there's also some audio sounds. So here, you know, it's a fairly um, practical use of timeline animation because we are in fact doing a character animation and there are a few different parts to move around. The whole point here is that this movie clip called Harold, um, or the instance that has the instance name of Harold is sitting inside of all of these clips. So back in scene one, if I want this button here to communicate with Harold living all the way down there in that room of that house, 
uh, the path is going to be pretty far. So here you'll see that each of my buttons say house animation MC dot house MC. We have this huge long path to traverse. Well, you know, anytime I got to type all that stuff out, I'm going to make some typos. And it's also harder, as I hear, for the Flash player to process these deep paths. I read that somewhere. Who knows? So what I want to show you off the bat is that I don't have to all the time use this big long path. In my demo file here that's set up virtually the same way, what I'm going to do is declare a variable which is going to refer to a movie clip, or it's going to be a type of movie clip, and now I'm specifying the path once to my Harold MC. So the variable Harold refers to Harold MC living all the way down here. And then whenever I want to tell Harold to do something, I just use the shortcut. I'm just going to use the variable name. So I can say Harold go to and play stand. And Harold evaluates to this big long expression here, all the way down to Harold MC. So now you'll see that my button code is much less scary in all these instances here. And just to show you that this works, while Harold is sitting in room A here, I can tell him to stand, I can tell him to sit, I can tell him to get funky. Hey, sit! And there he sits down. So here we're communicating with a movie clip, and it's pretty cool. Now what's even better is that Harold doesn't always have to live in room A of floor one inside the house MC. All right. Let's go pull some magic out of my secret stash file here. Go back to my FLA, and we're going to just paste some junk. All right, and what I'm doing here is telling the movie clip called House Animation, that's the big enchilada right here, that it's going to have an event listener for mouse clicks, and then we're going to call the move Harold function. Now, since I'm applying this event listener to that parent movie clip there, um, I'm going to show you what happens, and I've done this a few times before, if I get the target property of this mouse event, which we're referring to by the letter E. I'm going to say trace E.target.name. And what this is going to do is allow me to click on any room of the house or any object in the house, and I'm going to find out what it is. I just clicked on room D. I just picked, clicked on room D again. Sorry, there's room C. This right here we know is room A. And this room right here when I click is room B underscore MC. If I click on the top of the house, you'll see it gives me the actual house. If I click on Harold, it gives me instance 10. You know what? I clicked on probably just a movie clip used as his face or something like that that doesn't have an instance name. So all my movie clips that don't have specific instance names, Flash gives them these numbered instance names right here, all right, for its own way of identifying these clips. So anyway, the, the lesson here is that when I click on any part of the house animation, target tells me the specific clip inside of there that's capturing that event, all right? Now, knowing this information, here's the awesomest thing in the world that we could never do with ActionScript 2. I'm going to tell the target of that mouse click to add child Harold. Well, what's Harold? Harold is this guy up here. And by using add child, I'm literally going to be able to move Harold to any room of the house. So now, let's get rid of my output panel, move it over here. Thank you. If I click on room C, that's where Harold's going to go. Into room C, we're now literally taking that movie clip and moving it around on the display list to be inside of room C, room D, room B. I can put them back in room A. Now the super awesome part of this is that once I move him to room A, these buttons still work. Yes, they do. I don't have to recode the buttons and say, oh, Harold moved to house animation, house, floor two, room D. None of that. By just using that reference of Harold, Flash is always keeping track of where he is on the display list. In fact, Flash doesn't even care where he is. It just knows that that movie, that variable, Harold, refers to this guy, regardless of if he's in any room. So as he's doing the chicken, I can just click on a room, 
and move him around. I can tell him to sit, stand, all that. So the important thing here is that my button code didn't have to change at all. It just says, hey, Harold, I don't care where you are on the display list, go sit. And when I click on any room in the house, it moves Harold to that position. So this is a technique um, that a, you could never do an action script too, and it really gives you a lot of power to communicate with movie clips without having really any concept or concern for where they are on the display list. So he's doing the chicken in every room of the house. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little fireside chat here, and uh, we'll keep them coming. Bye bye.